I'm Glenn Campbell, and I'm here in the woods of Georgia to talk about art. What is art? Well, I don't know. I don't know what art is. Could this moss, this moss on this rock, could it be art? Or, or could this, this bottle of Mountain Dew, could this be art? Look, look at the, look at the lines and form and function of that. Isn't, doesn't that look like a work of art to you? When we think about art, we're usually thinking about paintings and movies and music and dance and pottery and sculpture and all those classic arts. But you can also call a hamburger art. No, this is not just a hamburger, it's a work of art. What is art? And how do we value art? Well, we value it by social consensus. Maybe it's money. If a certain painting has gone to auction at Sotheby's, Sotheby's. and it's fetched $2.5 million, then the value of that painting obviously must be $2.5 million. And there's other artworks that are said to be priceless, like the Mona Lisa, which will, would never go up for auction. We know that's valuable because we've got 10,000 art critics saying it's valuable, saying the Mona Lisa is one of the 100 great works of art. Generally speaking, art is anything you want it to be, and we value it according to social consensus. Unfortunately, these are pretty lousy criteria for, for selecting art for yourself, because there's a whole world of art out there and you can only take in a little bit of it. What are you going to absorb and what are you going to ignore? It turns out that art is really very important. A lot of what's circulating in your head was put there by art, by books that you've read, by movies. He's looking at you, kid. Often fictional artistic forms that somehow got into your thinking, got into your consciousness, and are just as much a part of you as your own direct experience. If you lived your, your whole life in, in a cave without access to any form of art, without access to movies or books or television, you would be a very primitive being if you did not have art. So art is, is really essential, but there's way too much of it. Even if you just take the stuff that everyone agrees is good, like all the great works of art, there's still way too much of it to absorb. So you've got a whole world of art out there, and you have to select what art you're going to consume. Because like it or not, we are all consumers of art. Every one of us, even if we don't think of ourselves as artsy. Well, you go to the movies, don't you? And you read books, and you watch TV shows, and that is all forms of art. And you have to decide of all those thousand channels out there, which channel you're gonna, going to uh, absorb you are an art consumer. And if you're at all intelligent or creative, you're also an art producer as well. If you have an Instagram account, then you are an, are an art producer. And you have to decide what should go in your Instagram account, what sort of art should go in your Instagram account. Now, my broad criteria of art is art. It can be anything that anyone wants to call art, and the value is what everyone decides the value of art is. But that's not very helpful to you. You have to make a decision about your own art, what you consume and what you produce, and you have to have a criteria for that. So what is the criteria, and how do we decide what's useful art and what is not useful art. And I'm gonna break all the molds here and, and, and say something bold and outlandish about art that a lot of artists are gonna disagree with, and that is art has a function. Just like food has a function of nutri neutralizing, nutritionizing you, and, uh, and clothing has a function of, of protecting you from the elements, art has a function too. So what is the function of art. It, it's really very simple, and it goes all the way back to the very first art that we know about. And, and the first art we know about are cave paintings. Some of them are of human figures. You see a lot of hands. What these people are doing is they're trying to take their world as they know it and symbolize it. They're taking their, the animal that they just killed and they're trying to turn it into a symbol that they can paint on the wall 
once they've painted on the wall, once they've created that symbol, then they can start manipulating it in their heads. Once you have uh, painted an animal on the wall and it symbolizes to you the animal that you killed, you have a reference point now. You can look back at that cave drawing and say, ah, I remember that event and how it unfolded. And I remember what I did right. And I remember what I did wrong. So now you've, you've taken real life and you've scrunched it all down into a symbol. And once you've done that, then you can manipulate the symbol and in turn learn something about life. That, that's easily what all the great movies do. If, if you think of your, your favorite movies, the movies you saw years ago, but you're still thinking about, you're still remembering events in that movie, it is probably because that movie is taking something in your life, taking something essential about life, symbolizing it, and by thinking about that movie, you're actually thinking about other aspects of your life. What, what these characters went through in that movie is symbolic of the struggles that you go through. That's what fiction does. It takes some aspect of life, distills it, turns it into a symbol, which is this very simple story about something that no doubt couldn't physically happen in real life and you go through the paces of this character in the movie and thereby you learn how to deal with situations in your own life. That's the essence of what art is. It takes elements of real life, distills them, turns them into symbols. You manipulate the symbols in some imaginary space and this teaches you something about life itself. That's the highest form of art. That's not the only form of art. You could have a form of art where, like architecture or fashion, where you're really not trying to symbolize anything. You're just trying to make, create a, a first impression. You want someone to see your building and think a certain thing. That's one form of art, but that is not the highest form of art. The highest form of art is taking real life, turning it into symbols, manipulating those symbols, and learning something about life. So now you know what makes art valuable. It's not how much money is, is bid at so, uh, Sotheby's. Sotheby's. It's not how many critics agree that this is great art. The, the value of art is how it can be used by you or your viewers or your audience to symbolize something in their own life and teach them something or at least give them tools for dealing with their own life through these, this, sim, these, this system of symbols. So now if you know what you're looking for, you have criteria for both choosing art and creating art. Let's say you have an Instagram account, right? You have an Instagram account and uh, there's a million other Instagram accounts out there. You want to put out something that's going to appeal to people. People take movies of their meals or selfies of themselves in their sexy dress, but ultimately the, the, the Instagram post, just like any other form of art, has to take, take real life, symbolize it in some way, and give the viewer some, an opportunity to learn something about life. An ordinary Instagram post might be sunsets. Here's a photo of a beautiful sunset I took in Tenerife or someplace. It's beautiful. It's art. Sure, it's art. It's a beautiful sunset. But it doesn't symbolize anything. It doesn't teach people anything. You'd be much better finding unusual things, finding things that don't fit into what you would normally expect and take a picture of those things because those things, because they're different, because they, uh, they jar the, uh, your idea of what reality is, those are much more valuable to the audience because by studying this anomaly, you can learn something. Everything on Instagram is art. You know, it's, it's all art. And the common way to uh, value it is that this guy has 10 million viewers, this guy has 10 million followers. But you have to decide on your own what the value of an Instagram account or an 
any other stream of art is. And it's based on what are the symbols you can use and does this stream provide them. So if you're a content creator, if you see yourself as an artist, don't just paint me a pretty picture. The world is filled with pretty pictures. We don't need another one. What I need from you as an artist is insight. Insight into the human condition, insight into the world at large. I want to expand my experience through your art. I want you to give me a metaphor for living. I want, to, want you to teach me something. Your art shouldn't just sit there. It should reach out and grab me and try to show me something. Do anything at all to me. If you're a consumer of art, you want the same thing. You don't just want a pretty picture to hang on your wall. You want to learn something. You want to expand your experience through your art, so you're gonna select the art that does that. The art that actually performs a function in your life. That's what art is all about. Now, 90% of what we call art doesn't do that. 90% of what we call art is just pretty pictures to hang on your wall. It's stuff that's only, whose only value is how much some rich person is willing to pay. If you're really serious about your art, you need to turn it into symbols, manipulate those symbols, and spit them out again in some way that advances the knowledge of your viewer. That's what art is, that's what art should be, that's what all the art that you really remember years after you saw it, that's what it is. It's teaching you something. And that's what I want you to do.